Well, let's, you know, let's talk a few cases here. Maybe we can put some of these into practice and uh, give some insight in how we would approach the patient. So let's start with our first patient. Let's take a young person, 36-year-old gentleman who has recurrent synovial sarcoma. Uh, limited oligometastatic disease. Now, now most of us would agree that frontline setting with synovial sarcoma would be what? Ifosfamide would we and agree? adromycin. Is there anyone who disagrees with that? Anyone who would not use ifosfamide and adrian in the frontline setting for synovial sarcoma? So I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think an alternative and something I've done for some of my patients is I will give single agent ifosfamide and I will save doxorubicin. You know, with olaritumab in the second line if needed. I think the important drug is ifosfamide, but I agree with you, the, the, the doxorubicin in combination with ifosfamide, another reasonable alternative may be single agent ifosfamide, just because of the chemotherapy sensitivity. It's important to understand as well that um, synovial sarcomas tend to have a very high expression of PDGFR alpha, and so when you have a drug that actually blocks PDGFR alpha, like olaritumab, uh, we've seen some really dramatic responses and a long-term stabilization of disease. We've had several patients now that finished their adriamycin on their clinical trials, finished their adriamycin dosing, and remained with active disease uh, over two years on study with a 10-centimeter tumor that, that was basically turned off. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it, it, to a certain degree, makes, they may speak to the, the biology of synovial sarcomas as far as that they can become more indolent to a certain degree. But I think ifosfamide, if you want a response early on, I oftentimes will do single But agent. I think this would be the patient that you would use doxorubicin, ifosfamide, and olaritumab on a clinical trial. Well, is this patient already received AIM? Um, is it worth giving them AIM again? If they've no, already I mean, received? this I think he was asking setting, about yeah, frontline. It would be, it would be and I was trust. saying frontline would so, be AIM plus olaritumab. Yeah, that in, would be in the context our, of the clinical trial. That would be our approach. The, so just a couple of other things to add to that is uh, synovial sarcoma is of interest for immunotherapy, so we would HLA type this individual for consideration for, for studies in the future so, if necessary. Yeah, talk about that a little bit because immunotherapy is wide and you're HLA typing, so why are you doing that? What type of immunotherapy are you looking for and why? Yeah, there's cellular therapies going back to the TIL therapy from Steve Rosenberg at NCI, the patients that benefited from tumor infiltrated lymphocytes expanded and injected back into a patient were, were a, several patients who had synovial sarcoma. And there are a number of trials around the country at our institution and y'alls mm -hmm. where uh, these cellular-based therapies are particularly interested in, in synovial sarcoma. But it seems in some of the therapeutic approaches, the HLA type um, really determines the antigenicity of the tumor. The, the other um, the other approach that we that, that I would just add is that we would try to treat treat this 36 year old aggressively, so one could consider higher than 10 grams per meter squared ifosfamide. Um, sometimes we do 14 grams per meter squared, particularly in synovial sarcoma. Keeping the doxorubicin because it is doxorubicin sensitive tumor also, and then if we were able to get a really nice response, we would consult our sarcoma thoracic surgeon to see if these lung nodules could be resected and he could be rendered disease free. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, just to recap a little bit, we have AIM, we have ifosfamide, high dose ifosfamide, we have the potential of doxorubicin and olaritumab, all, so, all important so treatments. Yeah, so, so when we come out of the first line therapy, if this patient had a nice response and developed you know, recurrent disease, I, I think sometimes sequencing those agents like, like Rich spoke about, uh, more potentially, if you use an adriamycin-based regimen and ifosfamide, we'll even still go to high-dose ifosfamide as a salvage therapy. High expressors of NYESO, so there are a lot of strategies targeting NYESO with adoptive T-cell strategy, TILs, lentiviral vectors that can really um, shape the T-cells. Uh, dendritic presentation of those, I think, are all important. But what about when we've kind of moved away from some of those therapies? You mentioned pizopinib. Mm -hmm. I've seen some really dramatic responses. I mean, pizopinib also works quite well in synovial sarcomas. Yeah, yeah, it's um, been our experience too, and, and uh, it's 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 quite dramatic. And and 
and it's very, it can be very effective. Yeah. I think one of the problems that uh, when Pazopanib was approved in 2012, one of the problems with the community physicians was the managing the side effects. And they're now shying away from using Pazopanib, even, even in this particular case, that it's really effective. So I think it's important for the community physicians to understand how to manage the toxicity of Pazopanib. I think that's one of the major things that I'm dealing with now. So let's with look my at that a little bit, because I think that's a great point. When you say manage the toxicity, and I know what you're thinking, what do you dose do you start at <laughs> for most <Yeah>. patients? <laughs> so with the older patients, I dose them at 400 milligrams a day, and then I slowly go yeah. up if right. they can tolerate. Yeah. Uh, younger patients, you know, they can start at 800 milligram, but I'll be really quick to dose reduce if there's, um, you know, massive diarrhea or if there's, you know, uncontrollable hypertension, right. those kind of things. Right. So, but I think um, Kazopinib is underused and by it, the community and physicians. And I, I agree, if, if you manage the toxicities, you can really find the right dose for the patient, right? So that's critical. In, in my experience, and, and I follow a strategy similar to what Kristen does, we'll, we'll start at 400, and after about four or five days, we'll go to six, and then, and then to 800, and at least with that titration strategy, in my experience, it's actually the rare patient that I can't have it full dose. Um, um, it's interesting because remember, this is a toxic drug as well that is a fixed dose, right? It's, it's, yeah. It doesn't matter what your weight is. It doesn't matter, you know, what your functional capacity is. You can everyone gets that same dose. And so, whereas other chemotherapies, we dose based on you know, body surface area and those kind of things. So I think to a certain degree, learning how to adjust it to where that person is actually having um, effects of the drug that are beneficial against the cancer, but also. Uh, yeah, with, within regional toxicity, I think it's, it's, a, it's a titration, I think. Yeah, this goes back to our working in a sarcoma center. Mm -hmm. So my nurse practitioner, you know, sees four or five patients a day on Votriant. Mm -hmm. She calls the patients, checks up on them, and we manage the side effects uh, very aggressively. And we know the side effects. They're exceptionally predictable. We have diarrhea, we have rash maybe, we have some fatigue, and we work them up and we aggressively manage those side effects so that we can maintain dose intensity. Yep, I agree. And so, so synovial sarcoma is one of those diseases that once we start to really leave our first line options, anthracyclines, iphosphamide, open it becomes difficult, right? We we don't see as much responses in gem cytobine docetaxel. There's some anecdotal responses to trabectidin, but they're really should have considerations for clinical trials. And aside from the adoptive T cell TIL strategies for synovial immunotherapy, otherwise checkpoint inhibitors, the results haven't been that great. Um, so challenging disease and definitely an area of unmet need. 